Perhaps you've heard of Uber, a company that allows customers with smartphones to request a ride from Uber drivers who use their own cars. So if you're in need of a ride somewhere, you might use this smartphone app to request a ride. Then Uber would route that request to a driver who'd come and pick you up. But what if there aren't any drivers available to respond to the request? How does Uber ensure that it has enough drivers to match with passengers at any given time? One way Uber does this is through surge pricing. This is a strategy that uses the principles of supply and demand to set the price. Let's say that at a given time, in a given area, Uber sees that the number of people who want a ride exceeds the number of drivers who are available. That is, the demand for drivers is greater than the supply of drivers. In such a case, Uber may use surge pricing and increase the price of a ride by some percentage, maybe 20% or 50%. In extreme cases, Uber can even double or triple the price. Let's think about what happens next. If your someone needs a ride, you might be a little annoyed. The price of your ride just went up. Do you still want a ride at this higher price? Well, it depends on how much you really wanted the ride in the first place. For some people who really need the ride, they're willing to pay the larger fare. But some people might think the new price is too high and opt to walk or take a bus instead. So demand for Uber drivers will likely fall. This is the law of demand in action. Ah, but what if you're an Uber driver? From this perspective, the surge pricing looks quite different. If you're already out on the road driving passengers around, the amount you get paid for each ride just went up. Great! But maybe you aren't out on the road. You're sitting watching your favorite show on TV, and Uber sends you a message saying that surge pricing is in effect and the fares have doubled. Maybe this is enough for you to pause your show and start picking up passengers. So the supply of drivers will likely increase. We started with a case in which the demand for drivers was greater than the supply of drivers, meaning some people who wanted rides couldn't get them. With surge pricing, Uber decreases demand and increases supply, with the goal of finding the equilibrium where demand equals supply. A good example that shows what surge pricing does is actually a case in which the surge pricing mechanism broke. Due to a technical glitch, Uber surge pricing was not in effect for 26 minutes in New York City, starting at a little past 1 a.m. on a night in 2015. Now, on a normal Wednesday night, this might not be that big a deal. Unfortunately for Uber, and for thousands of people wanting a ride, this was not a normal Wednesday night. It was January 1st, and the clock had just struck midnight about an hour earlier. So what happened? Take a look at this graph that shows time on the x-axis and the percentage of New York City Uber requests completed on the y-axis. This graph shows that only minutes before the technical glitch, nearly 100% of requests were being fulfilled. But for those 26 minutes during the surge pricing glitch, fewer than one in five people who requested a ride got a ride. Lots of passengers were requesting rides at the regular price but few drivers were willing to brave the New Year's Eve traffic at that price. Once the glitch was fixed, the figure went back up to nearly 100%. This is supply and demand in action. At times, Uber surge pricing strategy can be controversial. For example, in the case of a natural disaster or safety emergency, when Uber surge prices may be perceived as taking advantage of people who really need transportation and have no other options. But what is uncontroversial is the way in which the combination of supply and demand work together to jointly determine prices.